this life is about omnic onic. And for those of you who don't know omnic, she is um, the only recorded person or the only person who used to be publicly visible who claims or who says about herself that she originally was not born on earth but that she was brought to earth as a little child in her own physical body. So this information, these words by themselves are hard to digest for so many people on this planet that I guess that this is one of the most one of the main reasons why she is not more um, known. You know, if somebody like Eckhart Tolle, most of you probably know him, uh, is a normal human being born on earth and who went through his experiences, uh, um, experiencing something like a, uh, like an enlightenment and so on and then eventually goes to public this is something that people can easier digest and um, I guess that this is one of the reasons why he is so popular not on the only reason he's probably so popular because he's so cute you know and because he can really uh, transfer wonderful information and helps a lot of people millions of people probably all over the world with his uh, teachings Omnic is a totally different category because her whole her whole um, history, her whole autobiography, is um, is so much so special. It's it's um, yeah, and it's something that it's hard to believe because most of the people on Earth are used to. Uh, this normal information that we are all going through a birth, birth process, right? And that we have a mother here on earth, um, whether we know her or not, um, but that we have physical parents. And um, yeah, Omnic says in her teachings that the other planets on this uh, in our solar system and she only talks about Venus, Mars, Saturn and Jupiter actually I cannot say nothing about the other ones Omnic says in her unknown history of the solar planet that all these planets um, were inhabited once as well millions of years ago probably and as you know, some scientists also uh, try, I mean, especially concerning the closer planets, Mars and Venus, uh, they already found some proofs or at least some indication that there used to be water on these planets and maybe even life. But this is the scientific um, point of view, which is uh, not saying so much yet because they could not really uh, investigate so deeply. The planets are not so far away from a universal point of view, but for Earthlings with uh, normal uh, science, um, technology, right? Um, they're still pretty far away and so not, not so easily to, to reach and to simply travel there and make uh, investigation and everything. Um, yeah, and as Omnic says, it's millions of years ago. So anyway, she says it's all very, in a, in a nutshell, so to say, very short, uh, that there are still societies residing on these planets, but they are not living in the physical dimension anymore, but that they are living in a higher dimension. Um, I only know about the astral. I don't know about the other dimensions. There are also higher dimensions which Omnic teaches in her soul journey meditation. Uh, she says that she was born on the astral planet, on the astral Venus, and that uh, as a child she became the opportunity to uh, lower her frequency, to manifest a physical body, and to come to Earth as a child. 
And there are many reasons uh, for this whole. One of the reasons is that she had a spiritual mission, which is for us here now, of course, the most important reason, because she brought great knowledge with her. Because she was born in a different dimension, much higher than we here on the physical, she did not go through the birth process. And the birth process usually means that we forget everything. That as a soul, we remember, we don't remember nothing usually. We remember that we are soul, we remember, we, we forget that we are soul, we forget that we had previous lifetimes, we forget that in reality everything is one and not separated. And we have to have this separation uh, knowledge or belief system so to make these kind of experiences. Um, without forgetting everything, we would not make the whole experience of being lost, of, of all the negative, so to say. And so the Earth is uh, one of the planets um, that is here or that has to be here. It's still here for these also negative experiences, but this is going to change. And this is what we are all now going through. We are all, the whole planet, I mean, I'm talking about what Omnic teaches, right? This is one reason why she is here, to teach us that we are all going through um, a shift of vibration. And I'm sure that all of you who are here now listening to me know this, that we are all going through um, a big transformation process and uh, that this transformation process is eventually... Uh, changing the whole planet, changing the whole frequency, um, and that we probably in the end land in some kind of um, dimension as well, similar to the one on Venus. I cannot say how long this is going to take because it's a gradual process. Omnic always said that everything has to become, has to be gradually and slowly so that our physical bodies can get used to the changes and to uh, adjust to to the to the frequency so the frequency changes it's getting higher and people in the physical bodies and with their physical brains we all um yeah we have to uh, get used to this new frequency so uh, there's so much to say actually and i'm um I asked some of you to ask questions. Um, I received some personal questions. I'm sure that you can understand that this is, I mean, it's my first life, first of all, and it's really about Omnic and her teachings in general. So very private and very personal questions. Um, I, I cannot really dive into in this session now. For personal and private consultation, you have to send me an email and make an appointment. Um, for a private session, which we can, of course, arrange, you know, per Skype or per Zoom. And then it would be, it's important for me as well as probably for you that we can see each other, you know, and that I can also listen to you. And uh, so that it's not a one way track, right? I do my best uh, in this one way scenario, <laughs> looking into the camera or uh, at myself, seeing some comments. It's still very weird, everything. <laughs> um, so if you have uh, general questions about Omnic and her teachings and everything, I would be happy to, to go into this. Um, and uh, of course, I can talk for hours, you know, just uh, out of experience and knowing about Omnic and her teachings. Uh, so, but I still would love to give you the chance that we are here now. So. Um, if you have a special question about Omnic. Um, oh, I'm, I don't know this word. Uh, Arthur is asking a question if the people of Venus have using Alcubierre drive technology. If so, average, it would be horrendous if Omnic told his plans to a scientific now, okay, I can I can answer this question in general. You know, Omnic 
teaches that there is something like an, um, a library. Um, is it the same like the Akashic Chronic or not? I'm not sure. Probably it's the same. Uh, how to say there is there is a storage, you know, like a storage um, field or where information is stored forever, all information. I guess this is called the Akashic Chronic. Many people know the Akashic Chronic as um, as a place, so to say. It's a spiritual place or a dimension or a part of a dimension where people who have the ability can travel to and get information about the soul and recall information about other lifetimes and uh, and things like that. And there is also a library, and at this moment I'm not sure if this is the same, but Omnix told about the library for scientists where information and inventions are developed and stored. And um, people on Earth, scientists on Earth, inventors, whose soul have chosen to play this role and to bring something to the earth from a higher dimension, some new, modern, really um, exciting technology. I mean, when we look backwards to other centuries, you know, I guess that those people who invented the telephone or the washing machine or cars probably um, received information from higher uh, dimensions. I'm sure there are much scientists, chemists, physic physicists, and math, math, no? math geniuses <laughs> who received information which we as the average people on Earth are not really aware of because these scientific information then flew into, uh, went into inventions. So we only usually uh, see the results and uh, yeah, if we are lucky, uh, we can use the results like electricity and eventually the washing machine or our ovens and everything. I mean, somebody must have invented these things, right? Including um, cars and so. So I don't know this word, Alcubierre drive. I'm sorry, but in general, we can certainly assume that uh, there are inventors on the earth whose soul chose to fulfill the special task of developing and bringing new technology to the planet. And sometimes um, they certainly travel as a soul to this library on other dimensions. I cannot say if it's only on Venus. Probably it's not really a physical location, you know. It's a it's a it's a it's an information storage place somewhere in the higher dimensions. And when the soul chose to to work as this messenger or as this inventor or scientist before this lifetime, I'm sure that with their um yeah, they are either traveling by themselves, maybe consciously, maybe unconsciously, I think mostly unconsciously, and they're brought or taken to some uh, storage places where they are, where they receive this kind of information. And of course, the scientist on Earth has to be physically prepared to that because, you know, if they took me as a soul to this library, it would be useless because I cannot, my brain is just not trained to do, uh, to bring inventions to this planet. This is not my mission. So it would be useless, you know, they are not taking me to this uh, special area there. They are taking me probably to other areas where I receive teachings that help me with my spiritual and personal development. And I'm sure that most of you can, while I'm talking, feel that they have special tasks or special ideas or special um, abilities or, or mostly, of course, when you feel excited for something. When you feel excited 
for whatever it may be. You can be excited being a physicist and bring inventions and technology to Earth, right? You can be excited to work as an artist. You can be excited to uh, simply do something simple like driving cars. Why not, you know, being a truck driver or something. Everything has its purpose. Every person, every individual, every soul is here for a purpose. I mean, in the end, you can also say there's no purpose and there's no sense. This is a different area of looking at everything, but this is uh, too philosophic for this moment because most of us, I guess, we are asking these questions. We are asking, what uh, is my purpose? Why am I here? So the simple quests, the, the simple answer, well, there's no reason and you're here for, you know, just for being here and there's no special reason. It's a good answer as well. <laughs> but um, I I am uh, also a very physical person here, you know, and I am kind of the, I feel like I'm more like the bridge between Omnic and the, and the world, you know. This is something that I um, sometimes had this impression because Omnic is really living in a different dimension, even with her physical body on Earth, she's 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 a pretty different person, personality, as a soul, because she has all this knowledge and all these memories, and she has this open heart. You know, her whole life. It's of course she she has emotions, and she can love, and she can cry, and everything, and she can be angry. It's uh, she's a human being, but everything is much more intense. Because she has this purity, you know, she brought this purity as a soul with her when she came with her own physical body to this planet. And so she um, she's very intense and very pure in her expressions. And this means, um, uh, yes, you can ask uh, some and, and one more thing, Arthur, because I'm sometimes looking into the comments. And if you have a question that I should try to dive into, uh, please, please ask it, unless it's too private. <laughs> but even if it's something private, I can try to give some some kind of an idea or advice or something, some hint. Um, yeah, the bridge. You know, we're living here on this, we have a an artificial system on this planet. This is how I would see it. And it's 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 neither bad nor good. It's just an, a system that we have in all countries on the whole planet that helps us as human beings who have forgotten who they truly are to live in the system and to live on this planet. We have to have the time because we need to have a, make arrangements, we have to deal with the time, but this is also artificial because in the higher dimension there is no time, there is just the now, as Eckhart Tolle told us. And as far as I know Omnic and I know her since, uh, what is it, I can, I can speak a little bit about myself and my beginning with Omnic. Actually, it began in the in the beginning of the 90s. So it's almost 30 years ago uh, when I first met her through the television. But what I wanted to say is that uh, since I, I guess that I know her pretty well, I know that she is not so deeply involved in this physical system, in this material system. So things like time and money and taxes and, you know, being strict with bureaucratic and, and being a bit ambitious and being successful and making money and uh, things like that that are... Uh, deeply woven into our societies and uh, Omnic is always has always been floating a little you know above this system and I see myself as as a person who can yeah who who is like a bridge because I'm not so deeply involved in this system as well but much deeper than Omnic is 
but way less than others are. <laughs> and I guess that we have these uh, densities, you know, density is also a very good term to overcome eventually because the densities and the um, bounds and limitations are, yeah, they, they make the soul and the heart shrink because when you're totally deeply involved in this system, totally deeply involved, the negative um, uh, characteristics like greed and anger or the, what are they, the seven um, death, deathly sins, right? Greed and, uh, um, you know, the movie Seven with Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman. I cannot recall the seven, but these are really the characteristics that are the way worst characteristics that a human being can really experience. But even experiencing them, as I said in the beginning, is neither bad or good from the soul perspective. From the soul perspective, all experiences are valuable and need to be done. And one last word on that. Omnek always kept saying that you are evolving as a soul when you look at every other being on this planet, when you look at all the other human beings with their limitations, with their decisions, what they make with love and acceptance instead of judgment and critics or criticism. Because when you say, okay, there is a murderer um, and I hate him because he murdered somebody or he is cruel to animals or whatever and you go into this hate and into this uh, anger and you maybe... Uh, try to fight against these kind of people who are doing something wrong or bad in your point of view you're still on the same level a little bit a, a little bit less because you're not actively acting out these negative characteristics of course but if you really want to heal your soul uh, or, or heal yourself it's the best perspective to just view these um, other characteristics and decisions that other people make from a God's perspective, from a soul perspective. And this is means I love and accept you the way you are, your decisions and your actions and what you think and what you say is not what you really are. I love you because you simply exist. I love you as a soul because you are a soul and you're going through experiences and I'm a soul and I'm going through experiences. And from that perspective, we, we are coming closer to a feeling of oneness, you know. Um, Arthur was asking, did Venice, I think you mean Venus, right? Venice is a, a, Venice is a city in, uh, in Italy, I guess. Venus ever argue about the shape of planets? I mean, are they arguing about flat Earth and terrestrial or something, but about their own planet, like flat Venus or Venus box? Well, this is a funny question. Of course, they're not arguing at all, right? I mean, if you have a higher consciousness, you're not arguing with anybody. Um, yeah, I know you mean Venus. You're not arguing with anybody anymore because you're out of this as I just tried to explain, it's funny that it's, it's the same level of explanation. I just tried to explain that when you are really settled in a higher dimension in your consciousness and in awareness, you're not seeing yourself separated anymore from others. So you're not struggling, you're not fighting, you're not arguing and you are just complying and feeling you know, um, it, one with the laws of the supreme deity. There are laws in this universe. Um, and when you are an evolved soul, you just become one with these laws. So they, they, they become your nature. And um, actually, they are what we really are, these laws of the supreme deity. Um, but usually, as I said, when we go through the regular birth process on Earth, we forget these, uh, this, what our nature is. And we forget about everything. 
But when we return, when we, when we begin to remember who we truly are, we, we stop arguing and we stop fighting and we stop being greedy and we stop being um, so angry that we could kill somebody else. You know, these, these negative emotions, I, it's really not negative. These are emotions which are not in balance with the soul. These emotions eventually transform they will be transformed into higher emotions and into higher ways of being on this planet, living with your own self, living with others. When you have a higher consciousness, you are in a different awareness and you are in the awareness of being one with all that is. Um, yeah, thank you for listening. I'm just curious. I'm looking 10 people are watching that's interesting if you have a special question um please write it into the comments if you like i guess i also had some questions coming in um give me one second i'm just trying to look at these um oh i think i i should explain why Omnic is not personally available. The camera is blurry at this moment. That's, that's funny. <laughs> um, uh, yes, this is one thing that I would like to explain. Um, Omnic is in physical terms now in her, in an, in an age where she uh, is absolutely uh, allowed to be retired but it's not only the retirement it's also uh, that she had a stroke in 2009 which is now 12 years ago meanwhile and uh, this stroke happened in Germany while she was uh, she was just beginning to give a lecture and I was sitting next to her and um, yeah, and she went out for a moment and then she came back into the room and uh, she was walking very slowly and she said to me, I think it's a stroke. And at this moment, I'm serious, I was not really aware of the word stroke because I'm not, you know, you hear me, I'm not American, I'm German and I don't know all medical terms. And at this moment, I was not sure what this meant, but I felt that something happened. But as usual, uh, Omnic reacted very, very um, calmly, you know. Omnic is totally in this awareness of accepting and understanding. No, not understanding. I think it's understanding is more a mental thing, right? So she didn't understand right away what happened. She, she got what happened. She said what happened. She said, I think it's a stroke. That was a mental thing. Uh, definition um, but she did not react with panic or something you know she was not like oh uh, I have to go to the hospital I think I have a stroke I have to go I have I need medication help me help me you know this is not Omnic this is not how she reacted she reacted pretty calmly and everybody was sitting around her and yeah just to sh cut it short um, she went eventually she went home with me her left uh, side was partly paralyzed and she said i don't want to go to the hospital i think it will pass and i'm as being anya always respect her wishes you know i respect her this is probably one of the reasons why i'm her companion because i never interfered I never tried to persuade her to do something or, you know, this is not my way of being with her. Otherwise, she could not be with me either because she has her own will and she has her own way of being. And it's uh, it's it's nothing, you know, that I should enter into with manipulation or controlling or something. This is something Omni cannot live with, with somebody's trying to control her. So I was like waiting patiently and we did the workshop anyway, despite her um, stroke and the effects. And um, 
there's there are some more questions i will go into them when i have finished this uh, reason why she's not teaching i think i mean i think that most of you can already understand this reason right right i mean of course she can still talk now after 12 years i mean in fact it was half a year that she was really badly handicapped that the left side was very har harshly paralyzed and since then it's just partly paralyzed so she can walk with a cane she can talk everything but she's not a person that is into technology and she's not a person organizing and managing herself so for these two reasons but for these three reasons plus she says she already said everything that's important she already fulfilled her mission from her perspective so to say because everything that she had to say and to share with the world is published and it's available and it's now really up to us to decide from our heart whether this information is something that we feel connected to, that we feel good with. And if yes, then it's up to us to, um, to integrate this information, to live it and to share it with others. Because Omnic is just a teacher somehow in some way, so she cannot be here forever. It's not about the teacher, only it's about the message and it's about the teaching um is there a belief that god or religion like god or religion even that thing is very clever and what difference does that make with god explain in their view i don't really understand them okay this would be something for a workshop really seriously because the god perspective there you have to be prepared to receive all this information. I mean, if you have not read her book and if you have not watched her lectures, um, if this is, I don't know, um, the first time that you are in contact with this information, it's way too much to put into some words. I can only say, no, they have no religion. I mean, the Venusians, if we're now talking about the Venusians or the higher uh, dimensional beings, they certainly have not religions because religions are part of our physical system. They are set up artificially, like all other things in our system, like the government and so on. So the religions, of course, they have a different purpose. They are not for, um, um, yeah, they are here. So what, there are many reasons why religions are here. But to answer this question, the spiritual beings from other planets, they have a god's perspective they are one with the supreme deities they have a perspective of creation from a creator's point of view and this is they can, you can also call it god but this is not the god from our physical religions for this moment i think this is all that i can say concerning the religions uh, and the god god's perspective because the whole information um, can fill really a workshop. It's part of Omnex books and it's part of Omnex teachings. It's a very interesting thing though because it really opens up your mind completely when you dive into this information. It's very simple and yet when somebody who has the trend information like Omnex teaches it and speaks it, there is frequency going with coming with the words and when you simply listen to it and open your heart and open your mind, you receive information. And one after the other, it will find its place into yourself as long as you feel good with it. When you feel, I got enough, well, then it's better to make either a pause or when you feel it's nothing for me, this is all wrong, I don't believe this, well, then it's nothing for you. It's simply, you have to learn to follow your feelings. Uh, what kind of view has Omnic? Could you please tell me about Omnic's latest, latest teachings and insights on our planet? Actually, Alexander, there are not there are no latest teachings. There are teachings from Omnic which were transmitted uh, since the beginning of her public work, and you can say until. 
2016. There are still some interviews online on our website from 2016 <laughs> where I and a friend asked her to give an interview and he was a professional cameraman. So these interviews are really uh, recorded professionally, cut professionally, something that uh, I cannot deal with. Uh, offer at this point you know i'm still here very uh, in a very simple way um but there were um there are some interviews where she asked answered questions and this is the last uh, time i think oh no the last time that she was in public was 2018 when she gave lectures at the mount shasta summer conference i think it was 18 i was with there in 15 and I think in 18, she was there um, with her daughter, I mean. And I think that Rob Potter, the organizer of the Mount Shasta Summer Conference, that he uh, recorded um, or somebody recorded the, uh, the lectures. But I don't know what she said there because usually she kept saying the same over and over again. Usually she, she introduces herself, says where she is, who she is, where she came from, and in the last years after her stroke, she did not talk for hours by herself anymore. She answered questions. So I hope that this helps because Omnic's teachings are a complete thing, you know. she It's like a complete teaching, spiritual teaching. And when you really dive into those in this information, I can I can I would say from my perspective, you know, because I'm involved with this in this whole now since 25 years approximately i don't need nothing new anymore i mean it's there are still things interesting and i still love going to workshops when i feel drawn to the teacher because for myself for my own spiritual development when it feels like in tune with what i feel is correct you know and the truth there is just one truth so teachers who are bringers of truth they usually you feel attracted to the same information because they're radiating similar energy um what kind of view has omnic about the sea situation shiva asks yes oh i see this <laughs> Mm, and um, so should we get the V or not? And how to interact with people who had the V? Because I've, I had heard be, that's be dangerous. Oh, um, for because we, we um, I mean, I would love to do this again. I'm sometimes a little bit getting used to it, you know. <laughs> I'm curious how this um, all reaches you, this whole uh, thing. And I'm sure that you, you may send me also um tips how to what to do better or if you have if you are interested in really maybe going into a workshop with me for one or two hours where on zoom or you know where you can really ask questions or here where you where you can ask questions i don't know yet how to organize all this you know i'm managing all this by myself so i have to figure out many things but if you are interested in in a longer conversation or in a repetition, please tell me. Then I will love to make arrangements because I love doing this and I love sharing this information. And of course, I love helping you with finding some answers and some puzzle pieces that give you a better picture of the whole scenario and of yourself. Concerning the C situation and the V situation, um, I, I have one uh, suggestion. If you want, check out the information from Elizabeth April. Elizabeth April is a very young, very pretty woman um, who shares lots of information from extraterrestrial uh, beings, Council of uh, Federation of Light and stuff. And sh there are some videos online on YouTube where she talks about the v and the c situation in detail and i can say that i can i can uh, i feel good when i listen to her you know so for me the information that she shares on that i have not listened to everything but i can recommend her information at this point and when i 
try to answer this question seriously and honestly, um, I can only, <laughs> I know that you would love to hear something else, but I have to be serious and honest. I did not talk with Omnic about this whole stuff in detail. I really, I can, if there is enough interest coming in, maybe I can arrange an interview with her on the phone. I mean that I speak with you and that I have her on the phone, but that's something I have to really organize and set an appointment for that maybe too because of the time zones and everything. Because I personally, I don't call her to interview her for personal purposes. You know what I mean? Because I receive the information that I need from the information that I feel good with. And it's something that is kind of a soul arrangement between Omnic and myself. When we were physically together, of course, I asked her something sometimes but really not so much because I listened to her. I translated her information into German for so many years. I translated the workshops. I made the book. So I got the information basically. And I know how Omnic, I mean, I know, I have a good feeling for what Omnic thinks and feels. So if you asked her, um, I, I would say that she, I mean, that she said one thing that they um, exaggerate a little bit with, uh, um, with all the things, you know, with all the rules and regulation. But I think that's almost about it. As a whole, Omnic teaches, and this is what Elizabeth April said in one of her vid videos about this uh, C situation and V situation as well, that we are the masters that we are the so as a soul are the masters of the physical so in truth in reality nothing can really harm us omni kept always saying the worst thing the worst thing in brackets that can happen is that you die and even that it's not so bad because you do already died as a soul so many times that it's for the soul something that is it's a birth in a new life so it's nothing wrong with dying. It's something that we cannot prevent ourselves from anyway. Um, <clears throat> the general C situation, I would say, from Omnic's perspective, I dare giving an idea, is that it's part of the transformation process. And the transformation process is, a, is, a, is an information uh, that she gave many years ago and which is online uh, in, uh, in video and on a DVD and which I could also share in, in another session or workshop or so. The whole information, I mean, is a lot. Omnic uh, used to speak one and a half hours about the transformation process of the earth. And the C situation that we are now going through is something that is part of the transformation process. But I just feel that uh, I could maybe, maybe I'm calling her one day and ask her that and maybe I record it and share the information. I still have to figure out a way to get some information from her nowadays also without getting on her nerves or without taking too much energy from her, you know, because she's really needing, she really needs her energy and she's not a long talker on the phone. So I have to really come to the point and, um, and then I can try to, to get something out of her. And the question, if the V is dangerous and how to interact with people, you know, when you are in, in the, uh, the hmm, it's a good question. And I think it's something for a different session because I don't want to um, give advice or say something that is um, not really appropriate. You, I mean, why not being in love? Why not being centered? Why not being in, you know, connected with your own self in every interaction? I mean, it doesn't matter if a person decides to get the V or not, or if you know it, if the person has it or not. It's, you know, you have to decide for yourself 
what you do with your body and how you react on others in general, not only on them. I mean, it's a, it's a personal decision whether people feel like forced, manipulated, or whether they do it out of fear, it's still their decision. It's still their soul path. All that you can do is trying to um, be kind and give information, share information the way you see this. Or you can say, well, I'm not doing this to my body because or asking why do you decide doing this to yourself? Is it out of fear? Is it out of obligation? Are you afraid of losing your job? I mean, bringing calmness and peace and love into this whole thing is, I think, one of the most important reactions. Yes, my camera is focusing uh, KN, I don't know. Uh, when I'm moving, I think the camera is focusing. I have to um, find a solution on that. Thank you very much, Arthur, because I see it myself, you know. I see my own picture and I see it sometimes blurring because the camera is focusing automatically. Maybe I need a different camera or I have to find out how to make adjustments myself while I'm talking because I'm a living being, I'm talking, I'm moving, I'm, and then the camera is reacting. I don't know how to change that. If you know it, you can tell me. <laughs> um, oh, there's so many wonderful questions. Uh, the C situation, I think Shiva, I hope that this helps. If not, you are welcome to make an appointment with me for a private conversation. Then we can dive in deeper into this, you know, if you want. Um, or we can have a different uh, Facebook live or whatever, you know, to go deeper into this. Because it's a very important situation that we are all going through now. And it boosts our own spiritual development. Oh, it gives us a chance to boost our spiritual development. This is how I would say, whether you, how you react. The camera is working. What's the best meditation for this scary time? <laughs> well, the best meditation for any time is um, connecting with your higher self. Oh, I wanted to do a meditation. I think it's... I'm not sure if this is now too much to go into meditation. Um, but shortly, a meditation, if you close your eyes, first of all, you close your eyes now and listen for a very, very simple, very short meditation technique or practice. You can just sit straight and put your hands into your lap and first of all breathe in deeply take a deep breath or deep deep three deep cleansing breath as omnic usually said she says take three deep cleansing breath and with this deep breath you are more setting your attention into your body you are moving your own attention from looking outwards, looking inwards. So you are with the breath focusing inwards. This is the first step. And if you, if you want, you can try to imagine that all the thoughts that are busy in your mind, that are rolling there in your brain, you know, you can even visualize them as thought complexes and one thought and here's another thought and you know it's like like a water that is where there's a storm outside and you are going inwards you're letting yourself sink on the ground of this water on the ground of this lake or of this ocean and while you let yourself your attention sink down 
you think you you just flow down with your attention into yourself into your heart if you want or or way down to the bottom where you sit on wherever you feel comfortable just settle in yourself and allow the thoughts that are there at the surface you know to disappear or to sink down as well like stones and they are merging with the sand with the floor on the ocean and when you have settled inside of yourself inside of your body with your attention in your heart or in your lower body in your stomach wherever you want to in your lower chakra in your root chakra you can start focusing on for example counting the breath so that your mind does not get you know distracted again because you don't give it a task if you want to give your mind a task you can say well now we are counting the breath you know we are counting the breathing and one good possibility is to breathe out say one internally with your mind and when you breathe in one this is one breath one whole circle cycle and when you breathe out again you think too and you breathe in and you think too and you breathe out and you think three and you breathe in and you think three and you do this slowly as slowly as you can and you're getting slower and slower you know just observing the breath and when you have reached the 10 you start again with one and when you are still so distracted that you have a hard time focusing and concentrating you can just notice that oh at four i got lost and begin again with one and now the last suggestion is that you're setting a timer that you that you install an app on your smartphone like there are so many mind bell or, or you know some timer or you have an alarm clock and that you set this timer maybe for two minutes five minutes ten minutes in zen sessions they usually do this for 20 minutes or 25 minutes this is a very simple instruction very simple meditation and if you do this it, from my perspective it doesn't have to be done regularly because i'm not the regular type you know i'm the type of i i need this now i'm doing this now or i do it when I'm standing in a row, you know, I can also focus my attention inwards while I have my eyes open when I'm standing at the post office waiting until I am served. I can do this anywhere. I can even do it in a car without getting, losing my concentration because, you know, the body and the car, this is this thing that is going pretty automatically. And, and yet I can still sometimes every once in a while say to myself, now I breathe consciously in and I breathe consciously out. But of course, this real meditation with closing your eyes, it's something that you should do where you have a quiet place. And uh, at least for, you know, you, you set the time. You say to yourself, now I'm focusing my attention inwards and counting my breath for two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes. And then you set the alarm. And when it says ring, you can say, well, I'm proud of myself. I did this today. I taught myself to concentrate and to focus my attention inwards. I hope this helps. <laughs> um, I think we are already later than one and I would like to let uh, let you go now because I think uh, um, it's it's a good maybe it's a good uh, it was a good start I hope so and um, uh, oh uh, somebody said somebody asks if I am recording this you know it's a good question I'm recording the audio with my smartphone and i tried to record it as well with my microphone with my device here my zoom but i think it uh, where is it here 
but I'm really not sure because I don't see this dot uh, saying to me that it's recording. And the video, uh, I have to see when I now close this window, if I, I think I can, rec I can save it. I have to figure everything out. Please, please be patient with me. Um, Healing for myself and my nephew would be something for a private session, really seriously. I mean, I would love to do a special session on healing um, another day, maybe a little workshop uh, where we can also in a private, more private area, uh, see each other and where you can ask the questions and I can go into them. It's too public here and we are um, running out of time, but I would love to help you, please Believe me, I, I do what I can. Um, but as I said, it's more something for a more private situation. And uh, thank you very much for all to all of you for listening, for joining me for in my first Facebook Live with my German English. And uh, <laughs> thank you for all your interest and everything. And um, I'm writing here my email contact at omnic.com so if you would like me to add you to my newsletter to the omnic onic newsletter please send me an email or if you have in if you're interested in whatever if you have any question i will i would love to uh, see you and i will certainly answer you I'm sending out newsletters every once in a while and announcing things like that, you know. I'm just starting with this device, with this medium, so, but I think I can get used to it if it's helpful and if people uh, like it, um, if you, if it helps in some kind of way, if it is beneficial. And as long as I feel that people are interested and that it is helpful in some kind of way, I would love to do more and to be present um, for you and to help you, okay? From soul to soul. May the universal love and blessings be and uh, hopefully see you next time. Bye-bye.